What's up guys, it's Pally Oryesk here. Today I'm going over the top five tips I have to create clean logo marks in Adobe Illustrator. Before I get into the five tips, I just wanted to say thank you for the support on the first two uploads of mine. I didn't think those would get much support, but I'm really grateful for it. Thank you so much. I'll leave a few of the nice comments up here as well that I really liked. I just wanted to say thank you to you individuals that did leave these comments. Leaving comments in general is super appreciated on the channel. So let's move on to the five tips I have. These tips don't have to be bound to Illustrator. You can actually apply them in any kind of logo creation program that you're using. I'm just using Illustrator right now to show what I mean when I say specific things. The first tip I have is consistent line widths in logo design. Right here I've put up two logo designs that are pretty much the same except they have varying line widths and you'll see it kind of feels a little bit more awkward or odd when it doesn't have the exact same and they're varying by little bits and it also just comes off as a little less professional. How I recommend keeping your line widths consistent is either using a stroke with a specific pixel amount, or simply making a square with your line width and setting it aside and using it for reference when you're building on your local mark. Also, I just wanted to clarify that when I say consistent line widths, I don't mean using specifically one line width. You could use two different or three different even if they're drastically different. I just mean when it's close enough that it looks like it should be the same, then it looks a little awkward. So if you're using something to create serifs on a local mark, then I'd recommend using two or three different line widths if necessary. But I would also keep in mind that you should keep track of what those line widths are, just so you can use them in reference for later in your logo design. Putting references to the side of the logo while you're creating it, like line widths, is something I'd often use in my logo designs. I feel like it helps along the way if you get stuck in a specific area, or it's just easier if you need that size right away. Then you don't have to go back to the logo, make another square, and figure out what the line width is so you can use it somewhere else. You simply have it on the side there so you always have it at your disposal. The next tip I have in creating clean logo marks is using smooth lines or just ensuring your lines flow. There's a lot of times on Twitter or Dribbble that I'll see logo designers post something and I can just tell that it's a little bit off just because of the flow of a certain angle or the flow of a certain area in the logo. It just doesn't look natural. Well, I'll touch a few examples here as to what I mean. I just created these on my own so I'm not throwing any designer under the bus or anything. But right away you can tell these curves are a little bit off in some areas. One way that I often combat this is using circles to produce the curves rather than just using the pen tool. I'll attach an example here to show what I mean exactly, but really what I do is I use two circles and then I kind of just connect points on them together, which allows for a more natural flowing line as opposed to an awkward or odd looking one. The next tip I have for creating clean logo marks is using consistent angles in your logo design. This is another thing I see a lot on Twitter and Instagram. I'll see designers post logos and the angles look like they should be the same but they're actually a little bit different which almost creates a distraction to the eye and it makes it look a little more awkward than it needs to. I've created a few examples here on the side just so I can illustrate what I mean exactly. What I would generally do is set a specific angle up at the beginning of creating the logo design maybe 15 degrees or 30 degrees depending on what you're trying to do exactly. And then you'll be able to continue throughout the rest of that logo design with that angle and the result should be a little bit better than if you were just guessing on the angles. I would recommend just setting it aside and duplicating it and then scaling it up when necessary and cutting off the extremities of your logo design. Or you can even use sine, cos, and tan if you want to look like a complete nerd. The next tip I have is being consistent with the rounding that you choose. This can apply in a few different ways. So when you're done with the logo and you want to round the corners at the end and you choose the live rounding options, I would recommend choosing all of the same numbers or even like consistently the same if you're using two different ones or three different ones. But this also means when you're creating a logo design and you're using just filled paths, I would recommend using two different circles and making sure they contain the same center point. Sometimes when I see rounding and logos online, I'll see that they use two circles, but they didn't start at the same center point, so it looks like it should be the same width all the way around, but it actually varies. And to me, it's a bit distracting, honestly, for something that's quite an easy fix. The last tip I have for people trying to create a logo design is a contrasting background. I think this tip couldn't be more emphasized. I see it all the time. I see like a gray with a dark gray or a gray with a light gray, or just colors that don't work together. And it often ruins the quality of the logo design, even if the logo design is looking great. The specific colors you use can really make an impact. If you're not creating for a specific brand or a brand that has its colors picked out already, I would recommend just going on Dribbble or Instagram or Behance, seeing what logos stand out to you and using their colors or even using similar colors or just using them as inspiration. When I posted daily logos to Instagram, I would often just go on Dribbble, find logo designs that match the aesthetic I wanted or match the colors I wanted, 
and used their colors or something very close to their colors and posted it on my Instagram just because I felt like that would stand out a bit more. This really helped me understand color theory and logo design and build my confidence by proposing logo designs with certain colors to clients that may not know what they want exactly. I guess the main idea within these tips is that consistency is key when it comes to logo marks. And knowing what width, what rounding, what angle, what everything is in your logo design can really go a long way for the end result. If you created anything using what you learned in this video, definitely tweet at me or tag me on Instagram and I'll check it out. And feel free to comment down below if you have any feedback or suggestions for these videos. I really appreciate the support on the past uploads and I hope you guys have a great day.